Well, this is the actual example two of chapter 11. And for this example, we are given a soil profile. So you have uh, the clay layer, 3.5 meter of clay layer. And then you have sand, sand layer on top. So the groundwater table is two meter below the ground surface. And then we're going to calculate the settlement of the clay layer caused by pri primary consolidation. So we're going to add this surface pressure, this load of 100 kilonewton per meter square to this soil profile and calculate the primary consolidation settlement. Okay. And we're going to calculate that settlement for three different scenarios. One, if the clay is normally consolidated. So two, if the pre-consolidation pre pressure sigma C prime is 200 kilonewton per meter square. And three, uh, sigma three prime is 150 kilonewton per meter square. And we are given the compression index CC, and then the recompression index is one fifth of CC. Okay. All right. So let's start with part one first. Uh, clay is normally consolidated. And for all three parts, to calculate the primary consolidation settlement, we need to know the initial effective stress and the final effective stress. Okay. So for part one, this is part A, this is normally consolidated clay. First, we're going to calculate the initial effective stress and we're going to calculate it at the middle of the clay layer. Okay, so that's where we take that representative sample from the field. So this initial effective stress has uh, these three components. So the first, this is the two meter of the dry layer above groundwater table. So that's two times gamma dry. And then you have four meter of saturated sand by flip back. So that's two meter of gamma dry. And then you have four meter of saturated sand, okay, saturated sand. So the effective stress corresponding to that four meter is the unit weight of sand minus unit weight of water. So that's a buoyant unit weight, sand. And then you have that saturated clay, which is, if you take the sample at the middle of the clay layer. Okay. So the distance here is 3.5 over two. Okay. So that's where you get that 3.5 over two, then times the buoyant unit weight of, this is a buoyant unit weight of clay. So gamma B or gamma prime clay. And if you substitute all these uh, values, the initial effective stress at the middle of the clay layer, 76, 0.08 kPa or kilonewton per meter square. And since this is a normally consolidated clay, so for NC clay, so for normally consolidated clay, it means that the current effective stress is the same as the pre-consolidation pressure, sigma C prime, okay? So in our lecture notes, this is called case one. Okay. And for case one, we are going to use the compression index C sub C in your calculation. So this equation here, this is basically the same equation. SC is H over one plus E naught CC log of sigma F prime over sigma naught prime. Okay. And sigma F prime is the initial effective stress plus the surcharge. So that 100 kPa or kilonewton per meter square value. So if you substitute all these values, so this is again, delta sigma h, uh, delta sigma prime. So that's given in the problem statement. Okay, so that's the surcharge we're adding on top. Okay, so that's the uniform distributed load, delta sigma. Right. So then the primary consolidation settlement for part one, if you're plugging all these numbers is 0.126 meter or 126 millimeter. So that's part A, normally consolidated clay. And for part B, uh, same soil profile, same surcharge. The difference this time is the pre-consolidation pressure. Okay. So we're given different set of data. So the sigma prime, C prime is 200 kilonewton uh, per meter square. Okay. So if you compare uh, the initial effect stress, so sigma naught, which is 60, uh, 76.8. 
and the final 76.8 kPa or kilonewton per meter square and sigma f prime is basically what's given here. So that's sigma naught prime plus delta sigma prime. Okay, so this is um, sigma f prime. So that equals 176.08 kilonewton per meter square. And so if you compare these uh, three stresses, initial, final, and pre-consolidation pressure, so we have sigma naught prime smaller than sigma F prime smaller than sigma C prime, okay? So these, uh, if you compare, uh, if you look at the, our lecture notes, so first, this is OC clay, okay? Because your effective stress, current effective stress is smaller than the pre-consolidation pressure. So it's OC clay. And in the lecture notes, this is case three. Okay. So clay stays on that recompression curve. So the slope you use in your consolidation calculation is C sub S. So that's the recompression index. Okay. So this recompression index is given in the problem statement. It's one fifth of the uh, compression index. So it's 0.178 divided by 5, 0.0356. Okay. So now if you substitute the um, these stress values, okay. so again, this 76.02 plus 100, so this is basically sigma F prime. And this one here, this is sigma naught prime. Okay. And 0.8 here, this is the initial void ratio, okay, which is again, uh, is given. Okay. All right. So if you substitute all these numbers, then the primary consolidation settlement for case two or for part B here, this is 0 0.025 meter or 25 millimeter. Okay. So that's part B. This is for OC clay. And this is calculation case number three in our lecture notes. In part C here, Again, same soil profile, but different pre-consolidation pressure. And we have the initial 76.08 and the, the final sigma F prime 176.08. Okay. And pre-consolidation pressure 150 kilonewton per meter square. And again, this is OC clay. So this is OC clay because your initial effective stress sigma naught is smaller than the pre-consolidation pressure. And for part C, this pre-consolidation pressure is smaller than final effective stress after that surcharge is put on top, okay? uh, smaller than sigma F prime. So this is uh, what we call case two in our lecture notes. Okay? So for case two, clay is basically, when you load this clay layer, it follows that recompression portion of the curve initially and then it gets to that virgin compression portion of the curve. So that's why you have these two components here. So this case two, remember the primary consolidation settlement for case two is H over one plus E naught. And that delta E has two parts, one coming from that recompression portion, sigma C prime over sigma naught prime. And then the second portion comes from the virgin compression. So that's log of sigma F prime over sigma C prime, okay? So this is basically sigma F prime, okay? And if you substitute all these stress values and also substitute the values for the recompression compression index CS and compression index CC, you will get the primary consolidation settlement for part C 0 0.0445 meter or 44.5 millimeter. So this is uh, uh, extra example two. This example basically covers all three calculation cases. One for normally consolidated clay, so that's part one. And then one for overly consolidated clay, uh, case three, and one for overly consolidated clay, case two.